what else do you pick up? Please. Yeah, what else? Uh, plants. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, dirt. <laughs> yeah, what else? Rocks. Yeah, what else? I'll now show you the picture. Somebody said water in the audience. Here, can we get it on camera so everybody can see it? We have a woodland scene with trees and a babbling brook. We have a woodland scene with trees and a babbling brook. This lovely lady picked up the thought form being transmitted. And I can tell you honestly, there's no collusion between any of us. It doesn't mean you people are no good. It just means she has a more open psychic sense. That finishes the lecture demonstration. Let's now go to question and answers. You got it on the camera, good sir? How are we doing on time? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Uh, yes? Who? Could, could it matter what angle the person stood in relation to the antenna and its various Theoretically areas? not, but remember, this is not ideal conditions. So it could be. Okay. Um, I have a question here. Uh, you talked about, uh, about quantum um, coupling between the two coils in the chair. Uh, how does that relate to what Bearden has been telling us about scalar electromagnetics? Well, Bearden, when he talks of scalar electromagnetics, is essentially what I call a potential wave. It's, it's there, but it's not there. I do that definitely uh, couples into that, definitely. That is basically. We're talking, this thing is a scalar generator or a detector, <coughs> or both? That term, scalar. Well, I mean, I use that term because uh, of our, um, you know, Scalar colleagues. has become mm -hmm. a catch-all for anything that's non-Hertzian. It's a non-Hertzian pickup. Okay. Preston, uh, yes, any, anybody sitting in the chair, would they have an experience of time travel or anything like that happen to them? That's the first thing. And the second question is, could you, were there future, sci the future scientists that our previous speaker spoke about, do you know who they are by name or occupation? Yes, but I'm, I can't say. Well, in the first question, then, people uh, sitting in the chair with the Remember, overcome. the person sitting in the chair was deeply, deeply entranced. His conscious mind was deferred and pulled off to who knows where inside himself. And the primitive mind was allowed to surface, which is a very flexible, pliable function. Yes, Alan? Yeah. Could you please describe the uh, design of the amplifiers, the three amplifiers? And uh, well, leave it to an audio man to ask about the amplifiers. Uh, do I have something to write with? It's a very interesting design. It's what's called a distributed line amplifier. This is a design that goes back to the year two, this amplifier. What it is, it's essentially a delay line, a coil, with capacitors to ground. I'm going to show you a three-section version. They terminate the line, put in the signal, and then you have three amplifier stages. This is an old-style way of getting broadband amplification. I read a number of descriptions that describe this line as differentiating with frequency and the one closest is either the highest or lowest of the band and the next one is the next part of the band and you got another part of the band. Of course, what do they do? They sum this thing the same way. Output with the capacitors. This is what's called a distributed line amplifier. Now, the interesting part, point on this is essentially all these amplifier stages, when that, those amplifiers is 10 of these, five groups of push-pull, they essentially electrically 
have the gain of the amplifier, the voltage gain of the amplifier, but etherically these things add on a real strange screwy setup. So this amplifier has more etheric gain than it has electrical gain. Another question. Yes, by doing, by doing this time travel experiment and by going back into the past, if you made a change and caused another reality, how would you know at this time frame if you made a change? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Can you answer that? No, we can't answer that. We don't know. It's the same as the chicken and the egg. I'm not trying to put you down, ma'am. It's just, if you change the past, you're going to change the future. You know what's happened in the future based upon what you're doing in the past, so you're probably not going to know what happened. It's going to be one of these closed loops where whatever happened between you and the future and you and the past becomes a separate reality and separated off the timeline. Watch uh, Back to the Future. It's a very childish movie, but some of the time concepts are quite accurate. Yes. Questions? Okay, thank you. I'll be around to answer more questions. Get out.